Hello, welcome to Sendias Rutland training on annual reviews. This workshop is for parents and carers for children and young people with special educational needs. It's really helpful to listen to some of the details through each slide by voice and you will find a voice icon at the bottom right of each page. If you click this, it should just play. You can do this workshop at your own pace, so feel free to dot in and out if you need to, and I hope you find this workshop useful. These are some of the things we're going to look through in today's session. We're going to look at Sendias, who we are and what we do. We're going to look a little bit of legal documents. What is an annual review? There are five different stages. Helpful hints for the meeting, sections to discuss in the meeting, what happens next, timelines and the current situation, um, including ages of 0-5 to five transfer phases and year 9, requesting a reassessment, uh, emergency annual reviews, ceasing the EHCP and for further support. Sandy asks who we are and what we do. We are a free, impartial and confidential support and advice service. So anything you discuss with us does remain completely confidential. We can support you in completed complicated documents, uh, also anything to do with annual reviews or even appealing a decision that you don't agree with. We can also try and voice the child or young person's opinions and help parents and carers make sure that their views are heard. Our contact information is on the very last slide. Just a reminder, the Education, Health and Care Plan is a legal document. It describes the young person's special educational needs, healthcare needs and social care needs. It also explains the extra help that will be given to meet those needs. There are certain legal documents that exist, like the following, that the local authority and anyone else involved in the child's education, health and care plan must adhere to. It's really important to remember that the annual review is a process, it's not just about the meeting. So the whole process looks at the provision that is specified in the plan and you decide whether it's suitable or whether it needs to change. The first review of the plan needs to be held within 12 months of it being finalised and then 12 months each time. The local authority legally has to review at least annually. In early years, which is 0 to 5, it's often reviewed every three to six months, so it's a little bit more frequent. At these meetings, everything must be laid down by the law and the code of practice. You can also find out whether the local authority decides to maintain, change or cease the plan. They'll let you know either way. Uh, and this also provides you an opportunity to update or request any changes each time an annual review meeting happens. It's really important to try to prepare for the annual review meeting as best you can. This is an opportunity to gather views and opinions from young people themselves, how things are going, if things are going well or not so well, and whether the support they're receiving is correct for them. This is also a chance for you to make notes before the meeting of anything that you wish to discuss. Sometimes when you're in the meeting, whether it be in person or online, you might forget so it's very important to try and make a note of all the important things that you do want to discuss. There are five different stages of the annual review process. The first stage is the local authority will gather views and wishes from the children, young people, parents and carers and all professionals involved. Step two, the invitations are all sent out to everybody who could attend the meeting. This includes the local authority, the school, the head teacher, the young person and any other professionals. This should be done two weeks prior to the meeting. Step three is the meeting itself. So this will now take place online or possibly when schools return back to a formal group face-to-face -face meeting. But for now, they're still going ahead and they're still being done online. 
Step four is preparing the report. So anything that comes from the meeting, any notes, anything that's discussed will all be written down and it'll all be sent to all different parties. Then step five is decision and amendments. This is where they look at the final plan and the local authority will decide to amend the plan, keep the plan the same, maintain it or cease the plan. Here we look at the steps in a little bit more detail. So step one is where usually the head teacher will write to all the professionals involved, including the child or young person themselves, to gather their views, wishes and feelings before the meeting takes place. This is where you could include your view as a parent and state how you feel about the current arrangements and also gives you an opportunity to discuss any changes that you might want to discuss in the actual meeting itself. This should all be done prior to the meeting. If you do find it difficult to get views directly from your child or young person, Sendias does have an interactive activity that may help with this process. It's a review of picture cards so that the child or young person doesn't necessarily have to attend the online meeting, but you can gather their views before. Step two in a little more detail is where the head teacher usually will invite all of those required to attend the meeting. This includes the parents and carers, the young people if they wish to attend and any other professionals involved. For example, the local authority or anyone else within the school or any professionals from health, social care or even future schools if it's a, a transition phase. This must be done two weeks before the annual review meeting and circulate the copies of any reports that they've received in step one. Going back to the legal documentation, in the SEND regs 2014, this is a list of people that the head teacher or their delegate must obtain or at least request advice from these specific people before the meeting takes place. Step three is the actual meeting itself. So it's really important to remember that the annual review meeting is a person-centred planning meeting. So it's all about the child or young person and at their best interests. So it mustn't be a how have things been this past year kind of meeting. It needs to be what provision are, is the child or young person getting? Does it work? Do they need more? Do they need less? And giving views, wishes and feelings as to how it's going. This also includes the right to request a personal budget for further support. Here's a list of helpful hints about what should be discussed in the meeting according to the code of practice. So you'll see a lot of the words say must. These are according to the code of practice and this is where the local authority must ensure that these things are adhered to. So it must focus on their progress towards achieving their outcomes in section E. It must establish whether their current outcomes are still appropriate or new ones need to be agreed. It must review short term targets, possibly set new ones and look at educational provision and arrangements for delivering it. It must also look at health and social care provision and check its effectiveness towards the outcomes. Also have a look if anything's changed and it must check if the parent or young person would like to request a personal budget. Step four is preparing the report. So anything that was discussed within the annual review meeting itself needs to be taken down in note form and distributed to everyone that attended. So the host, usually the school, must prepare the report with any recommendations and any things, whether they agree or disagree, need to be written down. It also must be sent to everyone who had been invited to the meeting and the local authority within two weeks of the meeting taking place. In step five, this is where the decisions and amendments are made. So after receiving all the reports after the meeting, the local authority needs to decide one of these three options, that it remains unchanged, that it needs to be amended or that it should be ceased. They will inform you of this decision within four weeks of the annual review meeting. Then you will receive a draft plan and then you can go forward from there. Here 
Here we're going to look at all the different sections throughout the education, health and care plan that may be discussed at annual review, sections A to J. Section A is quite important. Although it's not a legal part of the document, you need to check that the views and aspirations of the child or young person is still relevant. For example, if they remain the same, if they're interested in a certain thing, such as wildlife or animals, for example, it should be checked in this part that that is still their interest. There might be additional aspirations that you want to include through their new experiences, interests or circumstances. Section B is the educational needs of the child or young person. So you need to check whether their needs have changed or if they remain the same. This can be updated through any communication disorders, learning difficulties or anything that's now been identified or possibly diagnosed throughout the year. You need to check that it's a true and accurate description of the child or young person's needs. Section C is the health needs of the child or young person. So this is where you need to check if any new diagnosis or ongoing investigations have happened throughout the year. You might have updates on their health conditions. Uh, this may vary throughout the year, but you might be in a different place as to where, where you were last year. So this is a time to update any healthcare needs. Section D is the child's social care needs. So there might have been a change in circumstances within the home. Uh, you could have had a, an assessment of social care needs completed. You can also request a new social care needs assessment at this time for an updated version. Section E is looking at the outcomes for the child or young person. So it's really important to look at these because it's what they're essentially working towards. Usually they're expected to last over a two to three year period and still be achievable. However, they still need to be checked whether they're relevant and new targets set. We always advise parents to watch out for the SMART stance, looking at specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. So these outcomes should be really specific to your child or young person. How will they achieve it? When will they achieve it? Is it realistic, time bound and measurable? These are some things that you can check as you go through. Section F looks at the education provision for the child or young person. So this is attached to section B. So any educational needs that have been identified for the child in section F, the educational provision should be specific. So sometimes here you can look at things if they have been effective or if there needs to be an alternative approach for the need that's described in section B. Section G is the healthcare provision. So anything identified in section C as a need, healthcare need, needs to be put in here as a provision. So things like investigations that are still ongoing or any outcomes from what has happened in previous diagnosis. Section H is split into two parts, H1 and H2, which is the social care provision. This matches up with section D of the social care needs for the child or young person. Anything identified from the social care assessment will be put into section H1 or H2, depending on their age and also what the outcomes were of that assessment. Section I is the school or placement. So you can check the suitability of the school or placement. This is where you could possibly request a different school type uh, due to their needs in section B and the provision in section F. So if you are currently at a mainstream school, but you think a special school should be identified for your young person, this is where you need to request it and possibly look at the different types of schools that are available. Personal budget. This is where the personal budget should be reviewed if it's already in place or give you an opportunity to request one if you wish. It is noted the amount of money needed to cover the cost of special educational provision specified in the plan. For example, if there's a provision that's not available to the young person within the school, the local authority might decide 
and dedicate money to fund this elsewhere. The details of the personal budget and how it will best support the outcomes need to be described in this section. This can be paid in a number of ways, by di direct payment to yourselves, notional funds, or a third party where somebody else hold, holds the money for you. So that's the end of the sections for review. What happens next? Well, the local authority decides to either keep the plan the same, to cease the plan, or to amend the plan. If the local authority decides to leave it the same or cease it, they must inform the parents and carers and the young person of their following rights. The right to appeal to the tribunal if you don't agree with any decision and the time limits for this to take place. They need to consider mediation and also their right to receive information, advice and support, which is us at Sendias. If the local authority decides to make amendments to the plan, they should send the parents and carers and young people a copy of the unchanged version of the plan, along with the proposed amendments. You'll find this either in bold, highlighted or strike through, depending on what the amendments are. This includes the supporting evidence for the proposed changes, and then it gives the child, young person or parent and carer at least 15 days to respond with their views. This could include naming a school, as that won't be detailed in the draft plan, and it also will give you the right to meet with the local authority to discuss the proposed changes. Here is a timeline for the annual review, listing all the different dates that it should adhere to. There are some specific situations you need to be aware of for annual review, including phase transfers and moving from post-16 provision. Also, children who are in year nine, preparing for adulthood and going between post-16 institutions. Here is some information about reviews for children aged naught to five. Here is some of the legal wording where the local authority must adhere to these dates. So phase transfers can be from primary to middle school, primary to second school and secondary to post 16. You'll see that in regulation 18.1, the child or young person is within 12 months of a transfer between phases of education. The local authority must review and amend where necessary the child's education, health and care plan before either A, the 31st of March in the calendar year, if the child or young person is going from secondary school to a post 16. Every other time, it's by the 15th of February in the calendar year, ready in time for the new school year. For year nine and onwards, all reviews must include a focus on preparing for adulthood as well. This also could be looking at employment, independent living and participation in society. Sometimes invitations are also sent to the representatives of the post-16 institution, school or college. During the annual review process, this is also an opportunity to request a reassessment if you feel that your child or young person's needs have significantly changed. If the child or young person's needs have significantly changed, and it's not around the time of annual review, you can always request to the local authority and the school an interim review or an emergency review. Here are some of the possible reasons why the local authority may decide to cease an education, health and care plan. If you need further support for anything to do with annual reviews or any other issues surrounding an education, health and care plan, you can contact us at Sendias on the contact details below. We're also on Facebook and Twitter if you wish to send us a message in this way. We can also look at other training opportunities in the future. You can also find out more information from the Council for Disabled Children, the local offer, which is a local authority website, and also IPSI, which is independent advice.